go into some detail about the house so you can understand why we're talking about doing closed cell polyurethane over an open cell polyurethane foam underneath this house. Um, some information you need to know. First of all, again, this is not a pured house. This is a true uh, crawl space issue with the, with the house. We got, it is an enclosed crawl space if you look all the way around. What they do have all the way around the house are several beds around the house. Now what they're doing is making this, when this house was constructed or remodeled along the way sometime, they made this a vented crawl space. What that means is there's a non-vented crawl space and a vented crawl space. In this case, this is vented because, well, obviously they're vents. If it would be a not a non-vented uh, crawl space, everything would be completely encapsulated around the house, uh, almost airtight, so to speak. Um, but in this case, they have vented. So, why is that a problem? Excess humidity underneath the house. There's a lot of issues that can affect a house like this. That there are there are tons of building science over the years and real life examples and many many case studies where houses are falling apart if you have vented crawl spaces or you're not insulating properly underneath the floor. It's it's the house has lasted this long, but the homeowners may be experiencing some difficulty in the future. And as of right now, they're saying that they're having some issue keeping the AC running properly, um, coldness on the floors and things like that. So they just want to make it a more comfortable environment and try to bring down the utility bills. The problem with crawl spaces, the amount of humidity underneath the house, actually to be quite honest, the amount of water underneath the house, which is all water is what all moisture is, all water vapor is, is just water in a gaseous foam form floating around the air. Um, the second you walk, open this door and walk underneath, what you begin to feel is water vapor, moisture, a cave feeling uh, on your skin. It's damp, it's wet, it's cool down there. It's, it's what we call cave effect. And that's what's happening down here. What makes that such a big problem or why is it such a big problem? A couple things. First of all, all this moisture has to go somewhere. Ground is just a sponge. For, uh, the ground and dirt is just a sponge for moisture. So tons of water. Water, a moisture, there are several forces that act on moisture to move it into the house. Actually, four, four different forces. One, simply, moisture naturally goes from a high vapor pressure to a low vapor pressure. So in a house like this, or any house for that matter, there is a lot of vapor pressure underneath this house. It's just soaked with vapor. Naturally, because you're trying to air condition the house, the house is always, generally speaking, much, it has a much less vapor pressure, much lower relative humidity. So water vapor is always moving up and going up into the house. Another factor is uh, the, the temperature on water vapor, the effect that has. Water vapor moves from cooler to warmer. That's just the natural flow of it. It is, although it's cooler down here compared to maybe outside, the house is always usually, during the summertime of course, is always going to be cooler than, than down in here. So again, water vapor is naturally just going to want to come up and then through your floors and into your house. Also, all houses experience a, an issue with what's called stack effect. What happens is warm air naturally wants to rise. Just like we put, a, the, put some fire in our chimney place, hot air is rushing up. By doing that, you are sucking air all around the house into a house to make up for depressurization right there that's pushing the air up. So in a case like this, what's happening is warm air is naturally rising up in the house. A convective loop is started. Since warm air is going up, something has to make up and come behind what's being pulled. So all houses experience, especially raised houses, experience a scenario where it's depressurized around the floor in the lower part of the house and it's pressurized further up. So now we have those three forces that are pulling air in or vapor, air, or vapor into the house. Then we also have another issue with static electricity. Water molecules naturally are driven to static electricity. There's a lot of, houses have a lot of things in them that have static electricity. It might, it's a minor issue, but water molecules just naturally migrate towards static electricity. So now we have those four forces that are acting on water vapor. So, why closed cell and not open cell? If we put an open cell product underneath this house, what's gonna happen is that water vapor is going to easily migrate right through the foam. That foam does nothing for cutting out vapor. It travels right through the foam. It has a high, the open cell foam has a high perm rating. It doesn't retard moisture flow at all. People say, well, we want it to breathe. No, it's just the opposite. That's what somebody told you to try to sell you open cell foam. That's not the case. That's not how it works. Water vapor is going to travel through that open cell foam. However, 
once it gets through it and through the boards and easily through the wood and through the subfloor, it's going to stop at that thing all houses have is a polyurethane coating on the floor. So it looks beautiful, it's shiny, it's a great several layers of polyurethane floor that you, uh, polyurethane coating that you have put on your floor. But what makes that such a problem in a house especially like this is polyurethane coating is a vapor barrier. Now what happens is the water vapor wants to come up into the house and it's coming up that way but it has to stop at your vapor barrier coating on your floor. It can't pass that polyurethane coating. Now it stops there. But the vapor pressure keeps coming and it keeps coming. Over time, depending on temperature differences, condensation, moisture will begin to develop and accumulate on the floor. It can't pass the polyurethane coating. It can only sit there on your floorboards. Wood very easily absorbs moisture and it will expand. We all hear about floors expanding. We want our house to breathe so our floors expand. No, by allowing the motion pass right through them but can't get past that polyurethane coating you are taking that you are now taking a chance of having your floors buckle with a closed cell closed cell polyurethane foam that is not only a coat approved vapor retarder but it is by all means stopping or retarding the diffusion of vapor into the product once it gets past an inch it starts diffusing and doesn't go much further than that so you, you are retarding or acting as a, a throttle so to speak the, the flow of moisture into a house. So if you can keep the flow of moisture from coming past that skin that develops on the closed cell foam, you're not allowing it to come into your house. Again, why is that such a big deal? Well, first of all, cold floors. Um, your floors are gonna be warmest during the winter time with closed cell foam. That's just a fact. Roughly speaking, you're the, the chill, the temperature on the floor should be only roughly seven, eight, nine degree temperature difference between right around the midsection of your body. Your floor shouldn't be that cold at all in the middle of winter time. Um, also, with vapor coming into your house and finding ways into your house, as in the case with these homeowners here, their AC, they have a great, they have a 14 and a 16 seer air conditioners. They have some good humidity removing systems in their house. But it can't keep up with the amount of vapor coming into the house. So the system is running all day long and it's just barely maintaining the temperature. There's no reason for it. The size of their AC system should be able to handle this house. But with the excess moisture, with such an overload of moisture coming into the house, the systems are working overtime trying to pull it all out, all the condensation in the house, and run it out through a drain pipe. Again, by putting that closed cell polyurethane foam, not only are you making it much more comfortable, you're also retarding the airflow, the, the moisture flow. And also, and by doing that, their ACs can now take a break, turn off because they're not having to re remove so much humidity to the house in a case like this.